Prometheus metrics come in different types, and choosing the wrong metric type can lead to inaccurate dashboards, false positive alerts, or missed signs of system issues. The two most common metric types are counters and gauges. In simple terms, counters can only go up, while gauges can go up or down. While it is easy to understand the difference, actually using them can be challenging. I often get told, I just want to make a simple alert. Why is this so confusing? You generally want your monitoring to be easy to set up, but that is easier said than done. You export the total request from your application, but then the alert fires once and never quiets. After fixing that, everything is fine for a couple of weeks, but then, you notice that the alert goes silent when one of your Kubernetes pods restarts. The truth is, you can avoid these problems if you learn about counters and gauges from first principle before using them in your dashboards and alerts. A counter is a cumulative metric that only increases over time or resets to zero when your process restarts. By convention, counter metrics often have names ending in total or count. Counters are not meaningful as an instantaneous value. What matters is how they increase over time. Let's say you have an application that gets 1,000 requests per second on average. It will receive 60,000 requests per minute. In one hour, the total number of requests will sum up to 3,600,000. But the total number of requests is not useful for your alerting. When monitoring the behavior of your app, what you really care about is not the total cumulative amount of the metric, but the rate of change. You want to know if there is a sudden dip in requests, which could indicate a problem with one of your backend services or infrastructure. You could also be interested in sudden spikes, which can be used to trigger automation to increase the capacity of your backend systems. This understanding of the usage of counters will help you query them properly and avoid basic mistakes. If you want to learn more about Prometheus, check out my courses on LinkedIn Learning. Prometheus Essential Training guides you through all the concepts you need to understand and use Prometheus in your daily work. You can also build on that and learn how to use Grafana with Prometheus. This one is a comprehensive course that I'm really proud of. As one of the best courses on Grafana on the market, you would even learn how to integrate artificial intelligence into your Grafana dashboards. Both courses are linked in the video description. So how do you query counters properly, considering that they only increase over time and are only meaningful over a time period? PromQL provides functions like rates and increase that are specifically for counter metrics. The rate of a counter over 5 minutes will calculate the per second rate of increase of that counter. This effectively shows you how fast the counter is growing. The increase of a counter over 1 hour answers the question, how much has the counter gone up in this time window? The scenario where you create an alert which fires only once only happens when you query a counter metric directly. If you do this, once the counter crosses the threshold, it will never go down until it is reset. To avoid your alerts firing just once, instead of querying the counter directly, you can use the rate which provides an indicator of the rate of progression towards a negative outcome. Prometheus can also handle counter resets in these functions. If it sees a counter value drop to a lower number than previously, it interprets that as a reset to zero and will continue the calculation by adding the new value. This logic only works because counters obey the rule of starting at zero and only increasing. A gauge is a metric that represents a single value which can go up or down over time. Gauges are useful for measuring values that vary in real time and are also useful for capturing the current state of the system. Unlike a counter, a gauge's value can move in any direction or stay the same if the measured state doesn't change. Gauges do not reset when your application restarts. If you don't handle this behavior carefully, a new instance might start without resetting a gauge and Prometheus could scrape an out-of-date value from a previous run. For this reason, you should initialize gauges on startup by setting them to zero or a known state. You can query gauge metrics directly. To check a gauge over time, we can use functions like max over time or average over time. Let's say you're tracking the number of requests for your app. At the moment, the number is 5,000. But in five minutes, that number drops down to 2,000. Another five minutes later, it's up to 10,000. 
assuming that the value is scraped every 5 minutes. These are the three distinct values over a 15 minute period. Depending on your goals, you will either alert on the maximum number of requests over time or the average. If you want to alert when a max number of connections hits 10,000, you will write a query like this. As a side note, don't alert on averages, always use percentiles. I will cover that in another video, so make sure to subscribe. Let's recap some of the key differences between counters and gauges. Counters only go up, while gauges can go up and down. If you have a metric that decreases, it must be a gauge. A counter represents a cumulative total of events since the start of metric collection, and a gauge provides the present value. When querying, counters are rarely useful without applying a rate or increase function to see how they are changing. Gauges on the other hand can be used directly or with simple aggregations like sums or averages. Counters have built-in reset behavior, meaning that when a counter is seen to decrease, Prometheus assumes that the counter was reset. This will be handled by adjusting the calculations in the respective functions. On the other hand, gauges have no concept of a reset. If the value of a gauge drops, it is assumed to be legitimate. To decide between a counter and a gauge for a given metric, say after me, if the value can go down, I will use a gauge. If it only ever goes up, I will use a counter. Scenarios where you need to choose between counters and gauges are common. For example, the CPU usage on a server can be measured in two ways, CPU time or utilization. Prometheus node exporters typically provide a CPU time metric like node CPU seconds total which accumulates the seconds spent in user mode. However, what we often want to know is CPU utilization which is best expressed as the percentage of CPU time over the last interval. Using the counter metric, we can get the percentage of busy time over the last 5 minutes with this query. We subtract from 1 and multiply by 100 to get the percentage. Another common case is monitoring disk usage. You might need to set an alert when disk usage exceeds, let's say, 90% of capacity. This is a straightforward threshold on the current value, so a gauge metric is appropriate. And that's it. I hope you've learned something today. Always remember, gauges tell you how full the resource is right now, and counters tell you how much activity has happened. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.